Welcome to Barcelona, where the 470 World Championship took place for 2012. It was proved to be one of this year's most exciting events. Barcelona and its brand new International Sailing Center was the host for this major event for both men and women. It was a week of full action and exciting races. The women especially gave each other a really hard time. Things often got fierce. The female sailors exhibiting great skill and tenacity. For good reason too, the race did not just decide the world champion, but also which countries would go to the London Olympics this summer. Sailors raced in two different groups for three consecutive days. They were then split into gold and silver groups for the finals. At the same time, athletes from China, Croatia, Russia, Austria, among others would also attempt to secure a ticket for London this summer. The men would also race in three groups before splitting into gold, silver and bronze. For the Aussies, this was their chance to win a second world championship within a mere five months. Would they manage to do so, faced with Le Boucher and Garros? And it wasn't just the Frenchmen they were up against. The Lindgren brothers from Finland, the Team Israel, and also Spain's Sarmiento and Barredos. These pairs were very well prepared for this event, but also many other sailors fighting hard for a place in the podium as well as to qualify for London. Proceedings opened with an in-port race. 10 470 men and 10 470 women teams head-to-head -head in a 10-boat race right in the heart of the city. First start for the men's fleet with Stuart McNay and Graham Beale starting in the middle. Immediately after the start, all boats tacked together with the Spanish on leeward. A very clever move from Bardados and Sarmiento. Pumping was also allowed today. And the team from USA seemed to be really good at it. Finally, the team from Spain was rewarded for their choice to sail on leeward. However, rounding the mark first in such a race course means almost nothing. The Croatians, the Japanese and the Americans were few meters behind and would give it all. The rest of the fleet had some crowded rounding. Bardados and Sarmiento then tried to block their Croatian rivals during the second upwind and managed to stay on top with McNay and Beal getting second. Immediately after, it was time for the girls. Sesto and Monsegur from Argentina enjoyed a clear start in front of the other Latin Americans, Oliveira and Barbachan from Brazil. But the best start surely belonged to Cohen and Bushkila from Israel. Even if it seemed that they were left behind in the beginning, everything would change seconds later. They finally rounded on top with a slight lead in front of the Slovenians while the rest of the girls had some crowded rounding. During downwind, the wind dropped significantly and the hit was on. And then it was time for the Italians to sail a shift and get on top. Four boats packed together just before the mark, but Cohen and Buschila would not let this go. They stayed calm and secured their lead winning this race. Congratulations to the winners! Time to receive their trophies in front of their audience. At the same time, many sailors hit the water in order to sail and get ready for the first race tomorrow. Trimming their sails and tuning their boats is what matters. The World Championship of 470 begins today. The sailors arrived early in the morning and got their gear ready for the race that was scheduled for 1200. Lots of stress for everybody this first day. The time was passing and the wind was almost zero, giving no other choice to the race committee than waiting on shore. It was time for relaxing then. At 1400, a light breeze finally came and it was time for some action. Fierce battles are expected not only among the top sailors, but the countries trying to qualify for the Olympics as well. Um, we are here in Barcelona because we want to qualify for the Olympics. There are only like five slots. There's, there's like 15 countries out there, so it's going to be like tough fight. 
What's important to remember about the men's fleet is that there are only five tickets for the Olympics remaining, but very many teams are trying hard to qualify. In the first race of the day for the women's fleet, the team from Germany and Mills and Clark from UK were the pairs that decided to start on the pin end. It was the favorable side certainly, and they tacked immediately too. Which was the thing to do? The Brits, however, disqualified since they started over the line. Surely a disappointment from the reigning silver medalists. In the men's yellow fleet, Belcher and Page from Australia had a slight lead in front of the Argentinians and the Greeks, while the rest of the fleet faced a lot of difficulties rounding the mark. In the middle of the second upwind, the Aussies were leading the fleet, placing themselves between the mark and their rivals, while the Greeks had decreased their distance from the Argentinians. They were now just a few meters behind and would give it their all in order to secure the second position. Would they make it? They all chose the right ley line, approaching the upwind mark and performing an excellent rounding, hoisting their spinnakers so fast. Every meter counts, and they know it. During the downwind, the Greeks threatened the Aussies. However, they had to compromise with a second place in front of the Argentinians. Two more races before the day would end, one for each of the other groups. It proved a difficult day for most athletes in the end. The weather shifted constantly. The second day, however, it was a completely different story. The breeze was building all morning. And this second day of the championship delivered perfect racing conditions. All fleets left the shore around 1100 hours. The increasing breeze and waves made the racetrack challenging. The conditions differed completely from yesterday's light airs, with the athletes needing their racing style and boat tuning. In the first race of the day, in the first start for the 470 men blue fleet, the team of Ogrodnik and Choroba from Poland and Tour and Gayard from Spain picked the right-hand side of the start line. But with many of the rest of the fleet over the line, there was a general recall. In the second start, we found Germany's Gerts and Fulman alongside Croatia's Fontela and Madanic at the pin end, but neither had a good start. At the other end of the line, the Aussies had to tack immediately after the start and headed to the right side. Finally, it was Croatia's sailors who rounded the downwind mark first, followed a few meters behind by the Germans. USA's McNay and Beale had a less than successful rounding. So, could they manage to threaten the crews from Germany and Croatia? The 470 men Red Fleet were the last to start, and once again, with many boats over the line, there was a general recall. When the race did get underway, Francis Sarbonnier and Mion had the best start on the pin end. Many French sailors are in the top 10, as they relished the conditions Barcelona delivered today. Well, maybe not for Bouvet and Guillaume. On top of a terrible start, they had problems with the spinnaker while rounding the downwind mark. Meanwhile, in the Yellow Fleet, the day belonged to Australia's Matt Belcher, Malcolm Page, who won each of the day's three races. The Aussies in first place, retaining their safe distance from the Greeks. But both teams remain in great shape and can certainly lay claim to the gold medal. They are followed by Snow and Saunders from New Zealand and Lefebvre and Kroll from Holland. In the last reach, the Dutch gave it their all to steal the place from the Kiwis, but they finally didn't. The two girls' fleets were racing on the more northerly course Area Alpha. In the second race of the day, in the blue fleet, Westerhoff and Berkout took the lead during the downwind, having passed the defending world champions from Spain. The Dutch pair were so fast on the downwind and just extended their lead, rounding the downwind mark with the Spanish far behind.
France's team of Lecrant and Geron, who were recently confirmed to the Olympics, were in third with Great Britain's Mills and Clark in fourth. This would prove to be a tough upwind for all the top four. The Dutch continued to control the race, rounded the downwind mark first and kept their speed on a really fast reach. The Spanish had to settle for second place, with the French and the Kiwis third and fourth, respectively. It was a full-on and challenging day, with three races for all the fleets in demanding conditions. After four races for all fleets, the leaderboard is shaping up well with nine different nations in both the 470 men and women top 10. It would be the last day of the qualification stage, however, which would prove decisive for the countries to move further, from Barcelona to London. So in the men's fleet especially, all attention was focused on the countries fighting hard to qualify. Since Canada, Russia, Ireland, as well as Turkey were all in really well positions. When the race for the yellow group got underway, Tobiasen and Johansson from Denmark started first on the pin end with Belcher and Page a few meters to windward. They clearly both wanted to make for the left side of the course. The Danish pair were sailing really fast with the Aussies on their heels and the Israelis to leeward. An aerial view shows those who took the decision to tack early in the first 200 meters, but which side would prove the more favorable in the end? During the downwind, Sarmiento and Barredos from Spain were closing on the Aussies, but both were left quite far behind since their decisions weren't exactly the best ones during the upwind. Casuda and Farnetti from Italy rounded the gate first, a safe lead separating them from Argentina's Sucari and Rena. They were followed by Gulix and Podlagar from Slovenia and the team from Korea. At this stage, none of the favorites were among the top places in the race. Expect the unexpected. Finally, the Australian pair rounded around 10th and once again picked the left side. Would it prove to be the right side now? Well, yes. So after a second upwind that could only be called tricky, they were up into second with the Israel's Klieger and Sella ahead of them. Klieger and Sella tried to block their wind and sailed until they left ley line before they tacked. But the Aussies were in excellent form and rounded the mark just 10 meters behind. Matt Belcher gave his view on the race. Yeah, we were started the first speed out on the left-hand side. Um, and we had our prediction, we, our feeling would be that it would shift further left. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't cross the right-hand side. And uh, we really actually noticed that um, the, on that first downwind, we got back into, I think, about 10th position, um, which, was, which was not bad. I think we rounded in, in about 12th, 13th or something. And uh, as we were coming down, we, we noticed that there was a little bit more pressure at the left. Um, we weren't quite expecting the shift that, that eventuated. And, uh, you know, lucky for us, we, we separated a little bit and uh, got a really nice shift just to get back into that group. In the men's fleet, in the end, Chile and South Africa made the surprise and got through to the games. In the women's fleet, it would be some time before a clear pitcher could emerge. The same was the case with the fight between the British and the Dutch for first place. They are still very close, though there are many shifts in position. The constantly changing weather didn't help much with that. Today concluded the qualification series, with the fleets now split into gold and silver for the women and gold, silver and bronze for the men as the championship moves forward to the final series. The weather has so far been challenging, and the day today was really cloudy and initially calm, with the fleets postponed ashore. The race committee waited until the wind had stabilized before lowering the postponement flag and sending the teams out to race just before 1500 hours. Today, the waves were described as like a washing machine, and the current was quite strong, so it was a really tricky day for the sailors.
In the 470 men gold fleet, the Croatians were the first to start on the pin end. Alongside them, the German pair of Gerts and Fulman, and Greece's Camporides and Papadopoulos. Immediately after the start, most of the boats headed to the left side. A few decided to tack straight off, playing the shifts, which were particularly tricky upwind. Calabrese and De La Fuente kept the lead until the very end, while the Aussies managed to steal second place from the Americans right at the very end of the race. Not what McNay and Beale had quite planned, having been ahead during the whole race. It was on the last jibe that the Aussies made their last plunge to move ahead. So, many bullets scored by Belcher and Page up until now. Their superiority and domination over their rivals appears absolute. The gold really is theirs to lose. Meanwhile, the fight in the women's fleet was well and truly on. Austria, Russia, Croatia, and Poland were really close when it came to the score, and so were equally close to qualifying. Let's hear what they had to say about it. So now we are number seven uh, and looking for the Olympics qualification, we're leading the pack. Uh, but I mean, we still have five races left, so we want to keep fighting every single race. And I uh, mean, looking at the results, we, it looks good, uh, but you're never, never certain until the last race. Uh, we are now on uh, 20 position and we are a third country uh, for getting a ticket. I think that we are able to secure our, our ticket to Olympics. We are now the fifth qualified country in the ranking, but we still have four, five races. Our tactics uh, will be just to sail as good as we can, so we will not do any much racing or something like this. We will try to do our best and then we'll see. Everything is very close and the regatta just begins for us. After five days of full racing, the hit is on. A lot is at stake for both the medals and the qualifying countries. So the women started first. There were two races for them. Israel's Cohen and Busquila and Spain's Pacheco and Patanzos were on the pin end in the first one. But as it happened on almost every day of this championship, a general recall was signaled, as boats were again over the line. For some, like Team Ericsson and Gabrielsson from Sweden, it could be second time lucky. After an especially bad start, the Israelis once again started on the pin end, and the Swedes did start better this time. This was also the case for the Dutch team of Westerhoff and Berghout, but they found themselves behind Japan's Yoshishako and Okuma, who were leading the race and in battle with the British team of Mills and Clark. In the battle for the Olympic qualification, Ivanova and Kruchik from Russia and the team of Ninchevich and Zupan from Croatia were so close they were almost touching. But it was the British team of Mills and Clark, the reigning world silver medalists, who won the race in the end. The Dutch team of Westerhoff and Burkhout crossed the line only just ahead of Graal and Swan from Brazil. So after today's two races, it was first place for the Brits, who are followed by Westerhoff and Burkhout, and then Ale Empori from New Zealand. The French claimed fourth and fifth. In the men's races, the battle is on to make the cut to Saturday's top 10 team medal race, and then the battle for the silver and bronze medals and it will be close until the very end, it seems. The general recall in the opening race 9 for the 470 men gold fleet was inevitable in this environment. When the second start was given, Ramsey and Leich from Canada and McNay and Beale from the US had a great ride of the line and took an early lead with the Canadians in first position. As the race unfolded, the Canadians couldn't hold their advantage and were overtaken. Race 9 looked to be a race win for the Finnish brothers of Jonas and Nicholas Lindgren, but a judgment error saw them overstand the ley line and give the race to the Australians. So one more bullet in the bag for Belcher, Page, with the Finnish second, and Francis Leboucher and Garros crossing the line in third. 
Another day of shifty conditions tested the sailors, with the breeze around 12 to 14 knots. Race 11 in the Gold Fleet, and Francis Leboucher and Garros had the lead from early on, with Spain's Bardados and Sarmiento very close. However, it was the French that chose the favorable side during downwind, increasing their lead. During the upwind, the French remained in first place and safely ahead of everybody else, placing themselves between the Spanish and the buoy. The end of the race found Le Boucher and Garros in first place. With the arrival of some big gray clouds, the wind changed after this point and increased, setting the scene for an even more action-packed second race. Over in the 470 Women's Gold Fleet, things were very tense, with five countries still fighting for the remaining four tickets to the London Olympics. In the final race 12 of the day, the Croatians had a really good start today on the pin end, with Zhao Mei and Chen Ai from China on the other hand not doing so great. It was another win for the Brits in the end. The Dutch girls, Westerhout and Berghout, came fourth, and these two go into Saturday's medal race on equal points at the top with New Zealand's Ale and Pauri and Laquante and Jerome behind. Today is the concluding day of the championship, with a two-way tie between the two first women's team and between the third and fourth pairs in the men's fleet. The medal race would be an exciting one. A little before the medal races now, and in this last race, the final chance for the remaining countries to gain a ticket to this summer's Olympics. After a really tricky second upwind where the wind dropped to almost zero and a tactical downwind, it was Croatia and Austria booked their ticket to the Olympics. Light winds and the swell favored them. Disappointment for the Russians, who weren't so lucky. Let's hear what Laura Vadlau had to say about their success. We fight every race for every point because we knew it's going to be tough and at the end we made it. And now, the moment to decide the world champion. Will it be Britain's Mills and Clark, New Zealand's Ale and Pauri perhaps, or will the title go to Westerhof and Burkhout from the Netherlands? Let's have a quick look at the results before the race starts. The first four places are really close when it comes to total points. This race will be quite suspenseful. In the medal race, it was the Brits that picked the pin end. The Kiwis followed them, but the Dutch couldn't lay calm to a good position at this early stage. At the first mark, it's Francis Lequante and Jerome in first place, with the girls from Britain behind them, followed closely by the New Zealanders. The Dutch were trailing towards the back, but they make a comeback during downwind. Picked the right side and were rewarded for this maneuver. It was a really tough battle during downwind, with the wind almost to zero and the waves mixing with the current. At downwind mark, Kondo and Tabata from Japan were first, with the French in second place. The Dutch were now sailing alongside the Brits, and they chose the opposite marks to round. In the end, though, the gold goes to the hosts of this year's Olympics, with Mills and Clark securing Great Britain's first ever 470 Women World title. The men's final was now happening, and it's Fontella and Maranich versus the Lindgren brothers for the bronze medal. The Croatians managed to block the Finns at the start of the race. Not a good start for Nicholas and Johannes Lindgren. But they didn't give up and ended to the right side of the race course. The Croatians finally managed to round in front of the Lindgrens. With only a few meters now, right next to the Croatians at the downwind gate. And just behind the pair of Leboucher and Garros. Japan's Harada and Yoshida took the medal race gun and the first place. Leboucher and Garros were second and the Croatians just one place ahead of the Finns. It's been really suspenseful today. Let's have a quick look at the leaderboard now. The medal race did bring some last minute changes when it came to the women's podium. Things were a bit more settled when it came to the men. 
but their medal race was still one full of great sailing moments. The time has come after the efforts of the last few days for the winners to receive their trophies in a great ceremony put together by the Spanish hosts. It has been an exciting and eventful eight days in beautiful Barcelona. Full on action, great racing, the best 470 sailors were here and they gave it their all. Next meeting for many of them and us of course, Largs for the European Championship. So join us next month. Thanks for watching.